Okay, so I thought I'd share a little bit of what's been going on behind the scenes at Eye of the Veda with my financial astrology course. And so this is a clip from April 30th, 2021. This was class three of the course. And I think it's aged fairly well. Uh, you guys can be the judge of that. And I will first admit that I started off this this class by admitting that, okay, I was wrong about the last week's predi prediction or the last class. I basically said that Bitcoin would go to 72K and it didn't after having reached 60K, it's all time high. We did actually get the, we did predict accurately Ethereum's all time high, um, but anywho, I was wrong. Uh, so that caused me to kind of reassess things and when the sun entered into Taurus after being in exaltation Aries, uh, it didn't do what I thought would happen. And so it caused me to reassess. And so this was a clip, this is a clip from that. And again, I, I hope you guys can see the timestamp on there, but if not, you know, there were more than 10 people in the class. So it was on record that I said this in April 30th, but I basically said, Bitcoin actually might go, if it doesn't go above 57K or stay there, it's gonna go down to at least 44k and then maybe even 32k, and uh, that ended up being what was happen would happen. And you guys can you know see this for yourselves. But you know this was what I wanted to do with these courses was to improve my own financial karma by helping others. And the best way I can do that is astrology because that's all I've spent my life doing really. And uh, you know lots at this time lots of Western astrologers and others were hyping up that. When Jupiter entered Pisces, Pisces, you know, Bitcoin was going to skyrocket up to 100K or something like that. And I was like, no, I don't feel that's the case. Um, so that's also why I needed to say this. I wanted that to be the case extremely bad. So it was hard to even say what I did. And, you know, looking back, I would have even been more uh, warning it even more. But, of course, hindsight's always twenty twenty. <clears throat> you know, this was just... This was just at a time when there was just a lot of hype in the crypto market. So I was trying to warn people and, uh, you know, this was basically my warning. So you guys can check it out. The general sort of like theme going on right now is that uh, right now Bitcoin, um, if Bitcoin doesn't really seem to go back up to around 57K or 55 to 57K and sort of stay there, that could be bad. Or that could be in a sense indicate that it's gonna go back down. Um, so a lot of people think that it will go if it goes up to 57k and it stays there, then it will it will just continue skyrocketing up, and we will probably get the 70k, 72k at least before it goes back down a bit. If it doesn't do that, it will very likely go back down to like uh, 47 or 44k or somewhere around that, and do what they call like retesting. You know what I mean? And hitting like a new bottom, and uh, <clears throat> from there. It might go back up or it might go even lower all the way down to 32,000 where like Tesla first initially bought in. And that could be the absolute bottom of where things go. Yeah, so we ended up hitting that bottom actually because we didn't hold the 57K thing like I was trying to say or if it, that wasn't clear. Um, that was like this point that, <clears throat> you know, it was showing that if it didn't keep you know, if it didn't hold that, then it showed the weakness. So it was likely that the Jupiter eighth house, you know, thing was going to be more likely the case, the eighth house indications of Jupiter. Uh, because again, uh, for those who weren't in the class, Bitcoins is a Leo chart. <clears throat> it's a Leo rising. And so Jupiter was in Aquarius. So Jupiter moving into Pisces, moving into the eighth house is just really, that's the worst house for wealth. Um, <clears throat> And so that's why I kept being in a like kind of a fundamental disagreement with the Western astrologers, although they use but they use houses all differently where they don't use the house equals sign thing. So I felt like they weren't able to see how clear this was. Um, anyways, so that here's a little bit more. But we're really like at, right now we're at the 
we're like a coin that's been flipped and it's like we, we don't know which way it will go you know what i mean it's just like sort of moving around a circle it's on its head and uh so I wanted to start with that because in the last class, it was a lot more bullish and euphoric and things are really breaking records. And now I just want to start by saying that I'm still overall very long term, like bullish and for the next year looking really good. But right now, in between this and our next class could be a lot of changes or in the next three, next two weeks or so. Why is that? Well, we're going to go into all the reasons for why that is. Um, so yeah, we could basically see 57,000 or not hit that and then go down to 45 or 47,000 or then down to 32,000 then back up to 43 before it finally goes up to like 72,000 or whatever. I'm still thinking. Well, so there you have it. So I was warning about that in the next two or three weeks and that was April 30th. So on May 12th was when the crypto market started crashing. So it was right in that window and that really was very closely lined up with Jupiter's ingress into Pisces. So yeah, it also shows us that the Bitcoin chart that I rectified in the previous videos seems to be very accurate um, because that's, you know, what I was doing all this based off of. Okay, and then here's just one more clip that I think you guys might find interesting from that class. And I said it just shortly after that. I'm still thinking overall that yeah, it's very likely that we're going to hit, you know, like 100,000 by, say, August or so. But right now, it is really, really risky. And so it is a good time to, if you've been in this market for a while and stuff, you might want to pull out, take out some gains, take out something that you can continue to operate on for the next while. Okay, that's what a lot of the big investor people would be doing. They would probably had that's basically what just probably happened if you ask me like what really probably just happened was turkey coming out in the news about banning crypto and elon saying that tesla sold off stock sold off their bitcoin a few weeks back and didn't tell anybody that probably meant a, put a lot of the hedge fund people the big players into a whoa let's take gains and and hedge ourselves you know what i mean and protect ourselves for the next few years because these guys entered into the markets like back in last summer when it was so low they've made so much money and a good investor doesn't want to try to like predict the exact top of the market that's just being kind of arrogant especially in a market where it's so easy to make money so like if you're not making in this bull market if you've not been making tons of money you've been doing it wrong you know what i mean if you've not been making it effortlessly and so yeah you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket right now okay is what i'm basically saying um and we're just in a very confusing time. See, like tonight or tomorrow night, Elon Musk is about to host SNL. And that could change everything because he'll just be like, oh, Dogecoin and Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. Do some skit about that that goes viral. And then you have a huge change in the markets just over that. Normally, that stuff doesn't matter. It's really the technical analysis that really matters more. And people who focus more on anything else, which is called fundamental analysis, they're usually wasting a lot of their time. Um, so, but in a bull market, it actually does work where, you know, like GameStop or things like this, where one big influential person just says to do something and everyone follows it. So yeah, you know, um, that Dogecoin or whatever, I'm not really big on it, but Elon is very big on it. I'm not big on it because I don't trust Elon and whatever he says, it'll make it go up or down. But if you guys think, I mean, that could be a good buy to do today because, then Elon or something, you know, we'll talk about tomorrow and then it'll get hyped up and go up a lot. So that's just something, you know, that's an idea for some of you who are interested in that. But um, yeah, so I just wanted to start with, with saying some of that. Um, I think So I just thought it was funny that I happened to, you know, kind of dwell on Elon Musk um, <clears throat> and about like literally saying he could change everything, you know, because I kept having a funny feeling about that and the eclipse going on in the 11th house for Bitcoin's chart, which is the house of influential people. And uh, yeah, there were a lot of plants and air signs that just seemed like there was like a social element that was causing some sort of instability. And uh, yeah, I guess I was right to not to trust him or whatever what I was saying in there. Um, and uh, yeah, because I don't trust it. I didn't trust the Dogecoin and that sort of thing outside of just a quick temporary, uh, you know, thing. 
quick temporary trade uh, and yeah so you I did tell everyone that you know unless you're very new to the markets it's a really good you, you're gonna want to take some gains and you know pull out some operating capital to make sure you can operate for the next while uh, and continue to invest in things if it did go down so that ended up being a pretty useful advice so I just had felt like I needed to share a little bit of what's been going on here because some of the comments I get from people uh, I don't know. It's like you're not in the group. You don't really know what I'm talking about. So you should maybe do check that out first before, uh, you know, criticizing, I guess, whatever I may have said like three months ago um, or even six months ago in a video. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm teaching um, a new and the next class will be this Thursday if you're interested. And then also if you're watching this later, these classes aren't you can be there live and then you get the advantage of being able to ask questions. But pretty much most people are taking them on their own separately and doing it all you know afterwards so you get a copy of the recording after you also get access to a group chat a private group chat if that's your thing but again you don't really need to do it with a group if that's not your thing you can do all this on your own kind of taking these courses as well and still ask me questions or whatever when it comes up all right cool thanks you guys hope that was interesting take care